Greetings Game Watchers, I'm Chris Capel and welcome to Wolfenstein The Old Blood. Now it's a sad state of affairs when a standalone expansion pack is the only exciting release for me in an entire year for a gaming genre I've previously called my favourite. Truly, the first person shooter, or FPS as the cool kids call it, has fallen on rough times. If Star Wars Battlefront isn't the greatest thing ever, I'm packing my bags and moving fully to the RPG. Into the desolate wasteland that was last year's FPS crop, Wolfenstein the New Order stood out like a burning flame, reigniting my passion for the FPS. Giving homage to the old whilst feeling new, combining B-movie silliness with some proper mature storytelling, and now a year later, Machine Games and Bethesda are releasing standalone expansion Wolfenstein The Old Blood. Let's get psyched. The year is 1946. The Second World War should have ended a year ago, Instead, with General Death's Head Strauss's machines of war, the Nazis are steadily winning. The Allies have one chance of victory. Find Death's Head's secret command center and shut him down. Reports have come in that Hauger von Schabs, researcher for the SS Paranormal Division, has the location. BJ Blaskowitz must return to Castle Wolfenstein and get the information from Hauger before it's too late. But what exactly is she looking for in the tombs around Wolfburg? One of the reasons I was really looking forward to The Old Blood was the story, which is clearly a deliberate throwback to my previous favourite game in the Wolfenstein series, Zatrix's Return to Castle Wolfenstein. In all honesty though, the story is the worst part. It's supposed to be B-movie like in style, yet isn't. Instead using the New Order's trick of telling everything in a straight, serious way no matter how ridiculous things get. That's not the problem though. The problem is that there's hardly any story here left to tell. It's all predictable and full of new, disposable characters that we only get 10 seconds with before they get horribly murdered or something. I wanted more B-movie stuff, more nods to previous games, or at least some plot twists I couldn't have seen a mile off. The gameplay fares much better, although not quite as well as the New Order. The gunplay remains excellent through and through, and it's so refreshing to be able to carry all weapons all the time. Damn you Halo for forcing us to choose. All the weapons are great and well thought out, so you end up using all of them, although I admit I often forgot about the rocket gun. Fighting Nazis is fun then, surprise surprise, and I personally loved how viable stealth was in many encounters too, with throwing knives, permanently silenced pistols, and officers that would continually call in reinforcements until you down them. This is where the stealth shines in Wolfenstein, where you can screw up and still have loads of fun. Nevertheless, I remain critical of a few small parts. Firstly, stealth is kind of enforced at the beginning of the game, so consequently it kind of drags as Wolfenstein is really a game where optional stealth works best. Secondly, a few sections are extraordinarily frustrating, mostly at the times where enemies seem to appear out of nowhere and actually are spawning out of sight. That's not challenge, that's trying to overwhelm you with sheer weight of imaginary numbers. Deeply unsatisfying. Thirdly, and this is slightly a spoiler, but then again it has been advertised everywhere. Final act of The Old Blood, roughly the last two hours out of an eight hour game, is almost entirely populated by zombies. Now, I get that this is a continuation of Return to Castle Wolfenstein, but that released in 2001, when the Nazi zombies trope wasn't so overdone. Hell, we've seen a trilogy of games called Nazi Zombie Army get released just two months ago. And you know what? The Older Blood's zombie sections feel utterly identical to Rebellion's title, except without the multiplayer or sniper rifle head explosions to save it. Even stomping around in a giant mech suit can't save this section. The graphics are generally great looking, but well, it's id Tech 5. That's right, we're talking regular texture pop-in and fixed indestructible backgrounds. I don't generally find it a problem, but for some reason the old blood has been really badly optimised. The new order ran perfectly on my PC in maximum settings, but the old blood really struggled to get anywhere beyond medium high without looking much better really, and cutscenes either lagged badly, got replaced with a green screen, or crashed the entire game. Messed up my checkpoint and crashed again every time I tried to resume that game. I even had to reinstall part of the game at one point because it just wouldn't let me continue. Wolfenstein The Old Blood is an incredibly fun standalone expansion to one of the best games of 2014, and in plenty of places is tougher. 
Sometimes more frustrating, especially in places with the spawning enemies, and the fourth stealth section in the beginning is a bit of a misstep, but overall the Wolfenstein gameplay is just as great here. Nevertheless, there are issues, most notably the Nazi Zombies finale being underwhelming, the story being a bit rubbish, and the load of technical problems this review encountered, and I'm not the only one. It's certainly not as good as the New Order, even condensed, but it's still almost certainly going to be the best single player only FPS out this year, unless Singularity 2 shows up of course. Despite these problems, I still really enjoyed Wolfenstein the Old Blood, enough to give it an 8.0 score. Worth a go then, but I doubt it'll be in our Game of the Year list come December. Thanks for watching everyone, Game Watcher and Chris Capel, out! Visit GameWatcher.com for all your PC gaming info, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our Twitter account to make sure you're up to date with all the latest gaming going on.